Hey guys, Jeff from Home Renovision. Today's video is all about how to build a shed. Today we're doing the framing, sheathing, and the roof sheathing. Everything you need to know so that you can build your own little workshop or shed or tiny house. <laughs> Pretty much everything you're gonna need to know to build anything in this video. Let's get at it. This slab was done, what, four months ago? Been a while. All I know is that uh, because of the supply chain issues this year, we've been moving our projects around all over the place just to be able to keep working all day, every day. Getting the shed done wasn't a big priority, uh, but we're getting near the end of the season. We got maybe two good days of weather coming up. So we are building this shed in two days. That's all there is to it. We're just gonna have to get her done. Kinda gone through the plan with my son real quick, what we're gonna do. So we're gonna just jump right into it. Realize we're on our own concrete slab. If you didn't see that video, you can click the link up here. We'll put the information in the video description as well. Basically, we have a concrete slab and we've got J-bolts in the concrete. Now, there's a lot of different building code out there. Some places you're gonna need more than what I put in. I just did this to hold it together because we do get some pretty good winds out here. Nothing too Kansas-like, but uh, it gets windy across the farmer field in the winter. So we just wanna hold it all together. Make sure that we get a good seal so we don't have the plates lifting and stuff like that and thaw free cycle. And uh, we're gonna get into all of the how and what we do. We're gonna basically cover it all, mostly hand tools, a couple of power tools, but we're gonna make this so simple that anybody can build it. We'll show you every step so you understand the process and the materials and the tools and the fi fittings, our screws, the nails, we'll cover it all. Let's jump in this. Maddie, we need some two by sixes. I need you off the ladder. Yeah. More than that, oh. all right. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna start off by building our back wall. It's really simple, there's nothing to it. It's just two by six lumber. It's gonna be two by six on the back and the front because that's gonna carry our rafters for the roof and that's a lot of load so we wanna have some good bulky meat there. We're gonna go with pressure treated plates and softwood lumber other than that. We're just gonna stick nail it all together 16 inch on center. We're gonna build it in two sections though, okay? Because it is heavy and we wanna build one part of that wall there and then build the other short wall right next to it right away. That'll keep it from falling over and that is gonna be nice and safe. Right here in the middle. It's the door. There's nothing on the back. It's empty. We don't, we don't have anything going back there. I thought there. we were doing the front wall first. So the first part of the layout, just to understand this, um, I always recommend have the outside of your lumber just a little bit past your concrete. It's really hard to get a perfect pour unless you spend a lot of time with your framing. My experience with most homeowners is the frame that they're working with is generally, <laughs> like mine, a little wobbly. So I like to go a little bit past on both sides, like just a quarter inch, a half inch or so, and then give it a shot. You can roll that over. Look at the size of that dent. You got a good shadow there? Oh yeah. So that's my dent, right? When I'm putting my wall in, I'm gonna slide it over to the bolts, I'm gonna lift it up, I'm gonna tap it back, okay? So really what I wanna do is I wanna just cut like this, just past my dent. It gives me all kinds of flexibility, all right? I'll do the same thing over here. Just a little bit past half. Now, once I notch that out, I know that I'm gonna be in a position where the washers that I'm using are gonna be over top of that wood. I'm not gonna have any concern. All right, here we go. When you're doing this, you generally have to cut past where your hole's gonna be made because you have a round blade there. You set that on that nut. There we go. Now, we're in good shape here now. So the process of building a wall, it's really as simple as taking your bottom and your top plate. And I buy these DeWalt tapes because they have a red square on it. And that literally means that's where the stud is. So I'm gonna have a stud here and I'm always gonna mark on the left. And I'll just run across marking the top and the bottom plate at the same time and then we can nail this all together. That's more like it. Now the process here is just as moat. Get it on that line, try to get it kind of flush. 
one nail for every two inches of dimensional lumber you're dealing with. Two by six makes three nails. All right guys, this is a sill gasket. It's just basically foam, plaster, right? We're gonna put it on the bottom, just staple it on. What it does is it creates a seal between the wood and the concrete for all those imperfections, all right? It's like an air sealer and it kind of helps keep the bugs out. So if you don't have a vapor barrier underneath your concrete, it also could act as that as well. You want the smooth side against the wood and the ridgy side against your concrete. Whoop. All right, so I was gonna have you put nuts and washers on those after we lift it up. Okay, let's get it in position all the way up. There you go. Okay, and then bunny up it back. There we go, it looks pretty good. Now, you wanna hold that? Okay. Want to bring it back towards you a bit? That's looking good. I intentionally am trying to hang off the edge of the concrete bit mat so that all the water diversion is away from the building. Okay, we're just tightening down the washer till it's denting into the wood, okay? There, that's gonna keep that lumber from going anywhere. Now we're gonna build a sidewall going from the eight foot to the 10 foot front. Right. So here's the shed, okay? This is basically 10 feet tall. And I'm gonna have four windows across the top. So what we're gonna do is build eight foot three all the way around like a great big square, all right? And then we will add the height with the windows and then we'll angle it backwards so we get our slope. So we'll have a wall like this We'll add a wall and then we'll put the slope on and that'll make the roof. So by keeping eight foot three all the way around, it makes our life simple. We don't have to do too much cut work. Unfortunately, I bought a bunch of 10 foot instead of a bunch of eight foot. Oh, maddening. So I got to cut all my lumber now. All right, so we're at the point where it's time to put the two walls together. One thing you don't need to do here is use a level. And I know this might be counterintuitive, but when you attach two outside walls and you go flush on the outside corner, it automatically squares the wall. Now, when we go to add the third wall, then we'll worry about level, but I'm pretty sure it just self levels, eh? For the most part? Um, yeah, I'm gonna agree with you because we're on camera. <laughs> yeah, That's, right. of course it does. Okay. We should, however, though, level the wall we supported. We're gonna tie it all together because it. Tying this corner together will automatically. Oh, Jesus. Okay. 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 Good. It's not going to fall over now. All right. Reality is sometimes you do the math wrong. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I end up giving Nate the measurement of uh, the total height of the wall, which is eight foot three, because it's eight foot lumber with a top and bottom plate. And then he cut all of the studs eight foot three, like I asked him to, which made this wall extremely high. So what we've done is we've attached two by four with screws to all the outdoors, outside studs. Marking them, I'm gonna cut them all. I'm gonna lift the top plate off, remove all the lumber and the nails, and then stick it back on again. Yeah, 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 I know. All right, it's not the end of the world, but also important, I wanna mark where all the studs go now because our marking is not on the outside, but I don't want to have my ladder in the dirt. So let's take a few minutes and we'll get this all corrected. I come right off the back end of this thing if you're not careful. Unbelievable. All right. All right. 
<laughs> yeah, anything can be used as a hammer. All right, now it's attached. Now it's time for the third wall. That's spooky. Okay. <laughs> spooky. This side's good. The other side's a little twisted, but it might be because of that. And yeah, this one's really out. That one, that corner is too, right? Whole side. Yeah, it's square at the other end though. All right. So one of the basic laws of geometry that we're working with here is as long as your top plate and your bottom plate are always the same length, when you tie your building together, you have what's like a moving parallelogram, okay? And getting it square is just an act of fixing the, the corners into position to be, to be plumb. The middle has to be reinforced because right now it's bowing. So what we're gonna do is just take two boards across the bottom in the middle. We'll nail this together to make a nice long stick. We'll mark the dimensions of the, of the, of the outside of the stud on the stick We'll lift this up and attach it to the inside of the stud base. So then the same distance at the bottom will be the same distance at the top and that'll automatically square the cube. Okay, so it might be bowed now, but it'll make the bottom the same as the top. And that'll make the process of squaring and plumbing off the corners really easy as soon as we grab the sheeting. All right, Matt, let's give this a nail, bud. And I'm looking for just like three. Okay. Okay, now how close are you to the top? Four or five inches? And right there. There we go, square. Okay, I'm gonna hang a punching bag off that. <laughs> right, that corner's still not square, we gotta sheet it. All right, so we got the basics framed now. We have three major components here we still have to complete. Well, the window's okay, actually, this will work fine. The, the door, we're just getting the instructions off the internet for the height, the actual dimensions, and where the header goes to carry all the weight of that door. So until we have that, we won't frame that in. And my exterior door here, I've got room in my frame to add the jacks and the header. Um, we've got to bring my powder actuated nail gun to bury that wall plate into the floor. We'll bring that tomorrow. Right now, I think, Matt, what we should do is we've got to build the ladder for the top or the front of this wall so we can put in our windows. Yeah, windows all the way across the top. Crazy design. <laughs> ah. Ah. But before we do that, maybe we should get this building squared off. What do you think? Isn't it squared now because you're a piece in the middle? Well, it's, it's, it's still a parallelogram. It's just moving together, right? Until I get the sheeting on and get the end gables straightened out. Because we don't have anything to keep the whole building from moving around yet. Right? Yeah. The sheeting will give it some strength so that it doesn't twist and move around. So I got a decent trick here. Uh, we're going to be putting the sheeting on the, the building now. That's half inch. 
Yeah, well, yeah. It's like half inch. So instead of uh, like, so we're gonna put it on lengthwise like this or widthwise, whatever you want to call it. Once it's on the building, instead of like looking down at the bottom of it, trying to make sure it's like, you know, at a good spot to lay it, lay it on and nail it on. I just measured four feet up, which is the width of the sheet, and then I, uh, you know, with my chalk line. So I measure out eight feet, which is the length. Measure up four feet, which is the width. So I mark it on two studs, and then I put my chalk line around that one stud with the mark on it. So I basically wrap it around the stud, put the line on it, and then pull it tight, measure it up to the chalk line, and then I walk it down eight feet to my other mark here, which is right here. And then I pulled it tight, eh, somewhat, and then I snapped it. And so basically that's gonna be, now I got a bunch of lines here, but roughly in that area. All right, so what I'm doing here is really kind of strange. At first light, you'll see how smart this is, but I'm screwing the sheet on the corner because that extends the side here. And then when I attach my sheeting on that side and bring it over, if there's any gap, I can push on the building to close the gap and then attach it. And that'll actually plumb and square it all off. I know, it'll blow your mind. It'll make it so close to perfect, it'll be just like, oh, why didn't I think of that? By the way, I'm not opposed to having a second pair of hands at the corner when I do this. <laughs> Holy wind! Uh, ah. uh. So that's my mark. Up. Uh. Right here. Okay, ready? Good. Now we're square. Go ahead and throw a level on that. I dare you. Go it's, get not, a level. it's not going to be level. Let's uh, do this on camera. 50 bucks the bottle is hitting or it's over the line. My work. And beautiful. Oh, look at us. We're even seeming in between the lumber like an idiot. Oh well, it's the price of getting it square. <laughs> it's touching the line. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's touching the line. It's beautiful. What are you talking about? Put it up against the sheathing. It's touching the line. Oh my God. You just. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, you put one wall up. Uh, four, actually. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I thought maybe this time we'd put it in the middle of a stud. What do you think? Anytime you throw a nail in. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> so now we're going to just install the rest of the sheeting. We're going to do it based off the center of the stud base because all the black lines that are painted are already the 16 marks. Makes life simple. Your bottom mark. There you go. Okay, well, not bad for day one framing. We've defined this space, and it's huge. I had no idea it was gonna feel this big. But uh, yeah, go big or go home, I guess, eh? Tomorrow, we will finish framing the front and get our windows uh, situated up there. Uh, we got a little bit of work to figure out because uh, the concrete pad is actually poured a little bit unlevel. Big surprise. But I think at the end of the day, we'll be able to get all that taken care of, get the roof on, and get this weatherproofed. Day three, of course, will be 
door, door, window, vinyl siding. That's gonna be a long day. All right, it's day two. Now I remember, I think I said at the beginning of this video, I was gonna do it in two days. <laughs> That's ambitious. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. First of all, I'm getting old. I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I finished at three yesterday. We didn't get started till after 10. It was only a five hour work day. So to be fair, I, I keep on calculating things with the younger Jeff who would work 10 hours straight, no worries. Today, we're gonna get the rest of the sheathing finished up frame in the two doors. We're gonna build a ladder above the, the front wall here because we're putting in some horizontal windows. I think it'll be a really cool feature. Get a lot of daylight in here. And then uh, we gotta get the roof on. So I think if we can get the roof on today, that'd be great. And then we can put a house wrap on just so that uh, I feel like we are getting some progress made. <laughs> I'm still without a door because, well, welcome to the supply issues that we're having, right? I don't have a door here yet. Amazing. And then we're going to have to fuss around with the roll-up door to get the, uh, the installation for that figured out. They don't come with instructions. So what we're going to do is we're going to assemble it on the floor, sort all the details, create a measurement, and build in the frame accordingly. But that's not today, because today is all about production. All right, no one's here yet. I'm here nice and early with Max, so we, uh, we're going to finish getting set up and then and probably trim up the rest of the building and try to finish the sheathing while we're waiting. 42 and a half. So we got 20 feet, right? We need a center line. And then I'm gonna have a window here and a window here. We wanna frame this based off direct transfer from the, the stud to the rafter. Okay, as many places as we can. So I'm thinking because we're on 16s the way we are here, if this is our center mark, basically, right? We put a stick there, stick here, right? Window bay, stick here, okay? And we gotta go double plate on that because it's really, and we can add meat, okay? But I want the ladder built so that it's direct transfer on that load from on, on, on this. So you want the bottom plate to be doubled up. Is that what you're saying? Or the top plate? The top plate. The top plate to be doubled up. So just build a regular ladder. Yeah with that one, that one, and that one, and the end on it, right? Boom, and then the same thing over here. So, so, I'm, building, so I'm building two ladders. Yeah, because it's, be the, it's 10 foot dimensional lumber, yep. right? Okay. So if we build two ladders yeah. like that, yep. it'll make sense for the load transfer. It'll make sense to tie it together. Uh -huh. It'll be easy to stick the windows in. Um, we'll just put a couple of blocks, right? Yeah. Based on the dimension of the windows. But uh, we'll just start with that. Sounds so you go, good. You go 10 foot stick, right? Uh -huh. This is why we built it 20 feet because it's dimensional number is already coming out of the box, right? So we're gonna go for a 10 foot stick and you're gonna put one right after four feet, bam. Just mark out, that's the four foot mark and then the four foot mark again and then the overhang. So there's only four, four blocks. Gotcha. We should measure the uh, size of the window and then give ourselves an extra inch just to make sure we can cut it all straight afterwards. 64. Yeah, maybe. That's gonna be the bit there. I'm trying to figure. I've never really. I used to. I just. I used to be the guy that told to build something. I never had to measure it all out. And this is fun, though. This is all right. Might take a little while, but we'll get there. I got a 10-foot piece of two by six. I got my top and bottom plate. Uh, these X's are the studs. This gap in the middle here is where the window's gonna be at as long as, as just like this one here. So I got two windows I want to put in the first, the right half of the building here. I'm trying to measure it all out and see how it's going to work. I have no idea yet, but uh, I mean, yeah, we'll figure it out. There's something not like uh, square with this. It's like the windows are shifted just over the center point one way or the other. I can't figure out which one. I think they're actually shifted over the center point this way too much like an inch or two. So if I have one window, all right. Okay, so that's my gap. It's gonna be one. You're visualizing, eh? Yeah. So my center line isn't on a stud. Neither are these boards. And I wasn't worried about that. You have a stud here? Yeah, And then so then I got 16 and, over. And that's your next one there? No, 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 so I got a stud on the end. 
Yep. I measured 16 over to line up with that. The, the next stud. Yeah. And then from there, I measured the 30 whatever, 36 and a quarter, which is the inside dimension of the window. Mark the next stud. Okay, so that's where we got this wrong. Why? Because if we just mark the four foot, right, then we have the direct load transfer at those points. You're going to have all the studs not lining up for the load transfer, and then there'll be pressure on the windows. Huh. Okay. If we were to go more like this, put your four foot, put that stud in, put that stud in, leave the next four foot, and then put that stud in, it's okay. So you don't necessarily want your windows to be like centered right? Well, they're going to be mirrored, but they're not going to be centered on the whole building. Gotcha. Okay. That's what I was trying to do. Because then when, if we build it this way and leave all the gaps, then we can measure it out from the finish on the inside and mark out where they should actually go, drill the holes, cut them, and then shoom. Okay. We don't sure. want to be too picky here. One, two, three, four studs. Get it installed. Make the next one. Get it installed. And then we'll mark it out and cut it to fit. So Because we've got all kinds of flexibility. So four feet is going to be here. Yeah. So mark it, put an X, and put in your, your brace. What did we say we were going to go with? Like 13 or 14 or something? Or so put one there, I'll one there. Down on one of these boards. Okay, just mark the eight feet. Eight feet. That's the next one. And then one at the very end. So you got four yeah, pieces, yeah. right? If you stick those four pieces in and put the ladder up, then we're done, all right? You can even put the, well, we'll put the skin on after because it's gonna be a different cut. So those are gonna be the load bearing studs. Because right now, our windows are centered, are off center to the left of yes. the ladder. Yeah, they're a little closer to the this is my other four foot, my eight foot mark. So yeah. then we have this gap. Yeah, and that's fine. I'm not worried about that gap. Now, what I'm are more concerned with with this gap being consistent from here to this next window, which is why I want that flexibility. So I can, I can, we can work that math. But we'll do that once it's all installed. Well, we're, we're not working with a, a design or drawings, right? So if we're, we're kind of working out of a visualization process. Yeah. It's a little backwards. So we want to just leave flexibility so we can maneuver later. That's all right. All right. So we're more concerned with the mirror effect than, than the actual balance. All right, guys. So when you're framing out an exterior door, understand that they're wider than normal. So interior doors, we add two inches to the size of the door. So if you had a 36, you'd frame 38. But on exterior doors, the framing is wider, so you gotta go an extra inch. So we need 39 inches wide, and you wanna set it up so that your header is at seven feet. So this is just a jack post, and this is like load transfer, right? This carries the weight. Ah. We do one on each side and then we just toss the header on. Then I'll be ready to put the rest of the sheathing in place. Ladder safety, eh? Holy cow. You know, the other thing you can do, Matt, we can uh, run a second hose. Really? Yep. Do we have a second hose? Yep. Inside the house, it's got a 50 foot hose. You can throw the blue gun on and you can work off there too. Okay, so that's the header. It's basically a nailing surface for the sheathing. I'm just gonna throw in a couple of more studs up there so that everything is nice and strong. Let's just recap. We got everything framed. We got an eight foot three structure using stock lumber basically. We have a cross brace in the middle to hold it from being bowed. We've got our sheathing on to keep everything from shifting, right? Once you get all those nails on the body of a sheet of plywood, the frame can't twist one way or another. In the old days, they'd actually put a, a brace on, on an angle as a part of the framing. A lot of time back then, they were using like black joe on the outside of buildings or drywall even, or nothing at all, just house wrap. So that was necessary. But if you're using sheathing, you don't need to have, add all the extra wood and it gives an incredible amount of strength and it gives you a nailing surface for your siding and it keeps all the bugs and everything else out and it's an air barrier. So, this is just a really quick, advanced technique for building on the cheap side of things, I guess. You know, it's not zip ball, but <laughs> it's gonna work for where I'm working. All right, so I'm gonna use my cordless saw here to cut all the extra sheathing off the edges. And the way we're doing that is this simple. First, we'll take the battery out. <laughs> we're gonna set the depth. All right. We're 
We're gonna set the depth to just a hair thicker than the sheathing. Because when we're constructing, thinking the end from the beginning, I know I'm going with siding. Siding gets an outside corner. How perfect this joint is, is irrelevant. Do not spend all your time fussing around on things that have no value. Now, I can cut, relatively speaking, just following the line that's on the, on the sheathing, right? You can throw a chalk line or you can guess, but as long as you're close, you don't cut through the nails, you'll be fine. I am too short. <laughs> ah, that's a shame because if Nate was here, he'd be able to do that for me without getting a ladder. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, find that hole. There we go. There we go. I don't want to damage that. I can use that here. <laughs> Darn right. Okay. Three feet, eh? Safety squints activate. You're gonna carry the big ones around the backside and line them all up and then we're gonna bring them over. If we uh, get them up on this wall, on the backside, up the side wall, you can pull them down and then shimmy it down the side while Nate pushes it. Once we get one rafter up, it'll be easier from there. Okay, so obviously we've been working on this for a couple days without the camera on. That's just because when we get to this time of year, we got to worry more about um, shed production than film production. <laughs> it's just about getting it finished, right? Now, if there's aspects of this build that you've missed and, and you don't understand or you want information for it, we'll put a list of videos in the video description for you, all about siding and doors and windows and roofing and all that kind of stuff, okay? So all the information you need is definitely available. Just gonna have to do a little bit more research. So here's the deal. The way we did this, you saw the roof trusses going in. The secret to this is easy. It's like putting in a floor joist package, all right? Because we're going single slope, there's not much to it. All you do is you start measuring just like a wall from one end and put your 16s all the way down on both sides, okay? You square everything off, you install them all. And then when you're done with that, you just want to cut the face of it all straight. So you don't have your lumber on an angle. You have just cut it straight front and back, nice and flush with the building. And then we add the ridge beam afterwards, okay, so that we have a bit of a build out. That helps with their water. So now we've got a, a drip edge, and then we're gonna have the siding underneath that. It's a good water diversion system. As far as the roof is concerned, once you've got it installed on 16s and it's squared off, you just get 5 8 OSB. It comes with the chalk line marks on it for you already on there. And you just line that up on your floor joist package, that's your roof and you just nail it all down, okay? Stagger all your joints, run it off the edge, chalk line, snap it, cut it off, good to go. Now, because it's a pretty much what we're gonna call a flat roof, you've also gotta use an ice and water shield. It's a self-adhesive. We did that same process in the last shed video. The only difference is in this video, we actually put the same roofing shingle on top and it goes on real simple, again basic construction, right? Stagger your joints <laughs> and install it according to manufacturer's instructions. It's five nails per shingle and it's a real easy process, okay? So now the roof is on. It's just about buttoning it up and finishing it up. We stuck the door in. Aside from that, there really is no major challenge here, but I'm going to take you inside so you can understand the framing and how we're going to finish and we'll show you our plan. So basically the construction here is really simple, right? We have structural walls on, the, on each end of our floor joist package that becomes our roof. That's made out of two by six for a structure. The ends are just kind of facade to put on the siding and to hold my door. And then you can see across the top here, Matt created these little ladders and these boxes are in effect are gonna be where the windows are going. These are really awesome. I'm gonna have these things outside all the way across the top 
to bring in tons of natural light. Okay, in addition to that, I'm also gonna have another great big window here. It's gonna be functional so we can get fresh air. And at the far end, we're putting in a roll-up man door. It's a five by six foot. The thing about this is it comes with no instructions. There's no way to get instructions. It's the last one available in Ontario. So, <laughs> we've just been really struggling trying to source things out. We're gonna do a video about installing that thing. It ought to be a lot of fun because we're gonna have to figure it out by building it on the floor and then take it apart and then reinstall it on the wall. It's gonna be maddening, but it'll be a lot of fun. Um, aside from that, really the key here is just water management, okay? Waterproofing the deck before we put the roofing shingles on, house wrap on the outside, sealing up and diverting everything with the trims and the siding. We've got all those videos available in our video description down below. You can check out all of that, okay, so that you'll be able to build this yourself. It's not complicated. If you can build a four foot piece of wall, you can build a shed. Let's just go through the process because we did 5 8 tongue and groove sheathing on the roof. It's a low slope, so it's gonna carry a lot of snow load in the wintertime. So we use ice and water shield and an architectural shingle over top of that. We use the whole system from GAF. So if you'd like to see uh, how that is assembled and the proper process for doing a roof, just click the link up here. We'll put a link in the video description as well because we did a great video on re-roofing the main house and all that information applies but low slope, you gotta have a complete membrane on the roof, and we, that's what we did. Other than that, we got some of the siding going on. It's real basic. We stuck the door in, and you've all seen these videos. They'll all be in the video description as well, but you can click the link if you wanna watch the vinyl siding. But right now, we're gonna dive into all of the windows and the roll-up garage door, because this is gonna be somewhat unique, and there's gonna be a lot to learn there. So I'll grab Matt, and we'll start going, the process of cutting out all the holes. And really, it's a, matter of working from the inside to make all your measurements and markings and then you do all the cutting from outside so we'll get into the details on all that right now <laughs> all right we're installing two kinds of windows in this house um, one is just a basic shed window now this was available at local home depot in my other shed video i actually use the same windows i think i've sent a lot of people on a search for a five dollar window because i misspoke in that video it wasn't five dollars i think these are more like 50. All right, so be realistic with your expectations. But the idea is simple, it's just there's no function, right? All you gotta do is stick it in and then do a little bit of foam, set a couple of screws and you're good to go. And we're gonna go four of those across the top, all right? And in this bay here, we're actually putting in a slider so that we can have a little bit of ventilation in here. It'll be nice in the summertime, okay? And the way that we do this is we frame this so that it's a little bit bigger than the window in every dimension. And then we just take a half inch spade bit like this. We drill it out to measure. Okay. And that's it. All four corners. And then outside, Matt's going to take a marker and a level, trace it out, and then cut it with a skill saw. There you go, Matt. Okay. Once he cuts that out, he'll just basically pass the window into the hole and then we'll throw a couple screws in it and put it in place. Now because this is a shed and it's not a heated room, we don't need to use expansion foam for any kind of temperature control, but you can use it to help anchor the window in place so you're not driving a bunch of screws in the wood. And it also helps to reduce the amount of bugs that are working the way into your shed. How's that going? Uh. Lines are getting drawn. Squares yeah, are being made. Oh. I'd prefer if you drew it from the outside of the corner of the hole, not the inside corner. I don't know if it's going to fit if you do that. Actual four feet. How are we doing here? Yeah, you're going to be too tight. Make sure you cut on the other side of your line. Sure. All right. Okay. Okay. See if she fits. I doubt it. There's too much crap in the way right now. We got to uh, trim this up. And now the window's upside down. Okay, so flip it one more time and then stick it in the hole. Okay. Oh, she's a halfer. Yeah. Ah. Oh, man. Okay, now, hold on one second. We're gonna be 
trimming like this. Okay. Now do you see how the inside of that window is almost flush with the frame? I think we can go flush with the frame and call it on the inside, yeah. All right. Okay, I got the, I got the flush part. So we're using just a J trim on the outside and the window is extended past the sheathing. So we're just gonna go with flush from the frame. Couple of shims there, bud. Okay, up. Okay, other side. Okay, beauty. There you go, nice and simple, eh? Now, best practice for installing anything is to screw through the shim, not around it, and to put the shims underneath where the, the load transfer is. Okay, and then anchor up here as well. Oh, I don't have a knife. I, I, I hate COVID in the morning. I'm so tired. You hate COVID in the morning? <laughs> COVID in the morning? I hate COVID at all times, but filming in the morning. <laughs> I thought you just said I hate COVID in the morning. That's pretty clean, eh? There we go. Now the only thing left to do here is just to check your mechanism. Make sure your window's not twisted. It should function easily enough. Oh, look at it. They even gave us screws. <laughs> I'll save that for another day. Beautiful. All right, so there's one. The other four are gonna go in roughly the same way. Uh, the jam extensions are a little bit shorter on these. So the idea is to get your screw right in off the side. <laughs> and because these windows are so small, I think one window at each end will be fine. So I'm gonna let Matt do that later, but right now what we should do is talk about our roll-up garage doors. These things are a pain in the butt. The ones that we bought didn't come with instructions. So the only way to sort out how to install it is actually to roll it out on the ground, put everything together on the floor, then get your rough and dimension and then build the hole completely backwards. Most things you buy in this world give you a rough dimension for installation. So while you're building, you can have everything framed. In this case, we've got to do it backwards and kind of reinvent the wheel like we're building a treehouse. And then she unrolls. Right? Look at this out. You can literally uh, just set this right in the middle and that's where that's going to go. Now, these are going to attach to the interior frame. There's holes here and self-tapping screws. That'll work fine. I've got caps to stick on afterwards. So this is actually relatively simple as far as understanding this is concerned. What we're gonna do is just take a measurement from the door and then add, we want the, the hole in the, in, the, in the actual frame to be about the same places where the door goes, okay? So that the track is installed on the inside then there's a bit of an exposed aluminum on the outside of the hole and the door goes inside of it. And so nice and simple, there's lots of framework. Really what we want is the, the hole in the wall to be the same size as the door. And then we're gonna be fine. Well, that's really easy math. We're looking at 62 and a quarter. Okay, now we originally roughed it out a little bit wider than that, we're at 65. So we're gonna stick a two by six on one side a one by six on the other side, we'll cut out the base plate, we'll lift it up, we'll level this, this piece off, put in an L, because there's no structure on, the, on this. The rollers itself actually get installed on these little metal brackets, all right? So we'll be able to uh, attach these onto the frame on the sides, all right? <laughs> they got some little locking hardware here. All right, and we'll just bolt all that together over top of the rail after we install the door. It's actually not gonna be that difficult, but getting the size and the frame and everything square and level, that's really the key. And then after that, the assembly's a piece of cake. Don't forget, you wanna make sure if you're adding framing inside your hole to add your sheathing, your aspenite afterwards, because we are going to be putting on some cladding and J trims, and you wanna make sure everything has a nice flush surface. Once he frames up the hole, then we'll cut the tie pro out of the way and install the door together on camera.
All right, well, it is uh, winter time. We're getting a little snow today. Tomorrow it's gonna be sunny at least and cold. So tomorrow we'll bring out the, uh, the big kerosene heater and we'll warm up our siding and finish the installation. But now we're just gonna go screw our windows in and get this closed up and then put in our roll-up door. It's exciting. Nice to have this place functional. <laughs> okay, because like right now everything's just laying on the floor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a mess in there. Yeah, it is a mess, but that's okay. It's our mess. We'll move it yeah. again and again. We'll be good. All right, buddy, let's get these windows in. Okay, so now that all the windows are cut in, spaced out, I think it's gonna look amazing. Uh, Matt's just gonna jump up on the scaffold and stick the window in the hole. I'll screw them all in, and then we'll, we'll step back and have a look and see if anything needs to be adjusted. We got a little wiggle room, so, uh, man, it's amazing how fast the weather changes around here. Okay, there we are. Can, I, can you push your top left corner? Okay. We're just gonna put everything into the top of the plate to start with. That's not straight. I know. How's that? Not straight. In which regard? The, your right side needs to drop. My right side needs to drop. Yeah. This is this easy. Do you have a level on you? Keep dropping. Do you have a level on you? No, just the window compared to the fascia is uh, Okay, well that's not what we're comparing it to. Quarter to a half The fascia inch. is not straight either, so we're gonna have to use a level. You can drop it down now. Why are we going off the top if the bottom's the level one? We're not doing anything. We're gonna get them all in and then we're gonna talk about it. All right. Push it in, please. Okay, can you go all the way to your right this time? There we go. Okay, drop it down. No whistling, please. Okay. This one here, does it have to come down at all? Yeah. What? Both sides. How's this? Now the uh, the left side, your right side needs to raise. This side has to raise? Yeah. Whoa! Just give me a minute, okay? Well, the vinyl's cold. It's shattering too easy. How's that? It, more if you can. I got it, I got a touch. Sure. And then both sides on the far one. Both sides on that one, eh? Hold the window, please. Now lift it up. Okay. Hang on. That one's twisted. Ah, oh, I'm gonna drop. Are that you really corner. gonna? Is it noticeable though? Nah, not really. So then I think at this point, it's like by the time we're done trimming it out with all the J trim, it's all gonna be irrelevant. And if they have an issue, I mean, one of our lamp posts are crooked too. So, <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's make the move to uh, switch over to the garage door. All right. Matt, help me roll this up nice and tight, please. So I gotta measure the, the height. Okay, take your measuring tape. Measure from the bottom of the rod to the here. Six inches for me. It's fine, That's, okay, we're gonna go with that measurement. Let's unroll it. See how, how long it is all together. Take your measuring tape, please. It's okay, yeah, oh. thank you. I think I like, I would like that. Can I just get a height from here to the ground? 78. 78? Whoa, that might have been 76. Six feet is 72. So just over we're gonna go with 72 instead as the height that we're actually gonna install this. 72 inches off the ground. 
What's the height of the header? Is this going to get a raise that I'm using the tape measure? I guess not. Just under six feet. So we're going to go with that height, right? This plus six inches. So throw that mark on the wall. All right, guys. So like we talked about, the middle of this here, that's where the side of that goes. So what we end up doing is we end up actually creating the hole exactly the same width as the door itself. And then we install this off center. All right. Boom. All right, there. All right. And we're just using the self-drilling screw. We'll level this off now. All right, level this off maybe. There we go. Now I can level it. Do, 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 do. Okay. That's level. All right. Ugh. I don't want to lose that bit. As you can see, we've already done the other side. And we've got this rail system that came in the kit. We kind of sorted out. This is adjustable. Right? It's a clamp, nut and bolt. So the rails will just sit in these. We're setting them six inches higher based on when we rolled the door up. The distance from the rod to the outside was about six inches. And so this will give us a nice fully closed area. It's 62 inches, sorry, 72 inches, six feet to here. The door itself goes about 80, so it'll stay kind of rolled. I'm still not sure how we're going to get the tension on it. Hopefully we can just put it in place and then tighten down the, the rod on it. We're gonna have to roll it up nice and tight, set it in place, bolt it in. I don't know. We're gonna work this out together. Why don't you try to wrap your mind around that while I'm doing this? That's why I'm sitting here right now. Okay. I'm trying to get on my Tibet tried... mountaintop. Yeah, get on your <laughs> I'm trying to visualize. <laughs> visualize. You know, I don't install a lot of garage doors for a living, that's for darn sure. These things have a habit of getting caught and twisting. I'm gonna go on this side so that the twisting action is pulling towards the frame and it'll be less likely to rip my arm off. Ugh. Just as it starts to make contact with the full bit and not just the tip, that's when all the boring happens and it finishes off real quick. So why am I up so high like I'm on tippy toes? That's crazy. You Maybe. know what? I think we're doing this wrong. Maybe, but we already did the other one. Ah, nice and controlled, no injuries. Pull that together now. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, yeah, perfect. You got your wrenches here. Okay. I think we're good. Before somebody gets hurt. What? What's wrong with you? Why'd you quit out on me? Because I'm done. Find you being a little violent. Okay, Matt, just keep the handle away from my knuckles, will you? And we'll be all right. So the black line is where our uh, resting place is, right? We're actually gonna, gonna hang the bracket on that block of wood. We cut one on the other side as well, just because we didn't have a, we don't have the door double framed. Wouldn't hurt to do it. Each. Four screws is uh, 80 pounds each, 320. We got over 600 pounds of screw strength here between each side of the door. This thing only weighs, what, 40 pounds? Maybe we didn't need to put the block in. Oddly enough, you wanna set this at the height of that black line? Roughly straight, eh? That ain't going nowhere. Yeah, let's put this in. Roll her up. 
Roll her up. Nice and tight. Oh boy. We've got obstacles over here. Apparently. Siding and leaves and nails. And we're going in like crooked. Yeah. We've got to have one hand on the bottom and one hand on the side holding the roll. Okay? <laughs> get your, um, Matt, hang on. Get this thing here. Get it over the edge. Yeah. Now hold it, hold it together. All right, what's the plan here before we lift we're it up? We're going to lift it up. And then in. Well, I've got my, my, um, my bracket sitting over here. So I won't slide off. Okay. So, so I'm on the left and you're on the right, eh? I don't know why we made such a plan. This is very heavy. Up, 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 and above. Oop. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's uh, feed this into the door first. Move to your left. Now, feed it into the, lift it, lift the door up. Lift it up and feed it in. There we go, now. Feed it, pull it down. Dude, you gotta pull your end. Yeah, I'm trying to. She's in. stuck. There we go. Keep going. Keep going. I got the top. You just pull it down. Just pull it down. Imagine you had to open and close one of these like this Just time. get it going. Once it's in place, we'll worry about all that detail. Keep going. Oh! Oh, she's just... You worry about the bottom, man. I, 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 I don't trust you. Okay. All right. We're there. Holy crap! That seemed dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on here, but my... Get the thing over and on first, and then we'll worry about adjusting it. Just get the thread, like, two threads on or something. <laughs> no idea what we're doing. <laughs> I've installed one garage door once, and it was a commercial job. At a at a uh, mechanics, and we put the door in, and then we tighten the spring by hand using wrenches. That right? seems easier than this. Except that it's under pressure, so if you slip, the wrench gets thrown off, and it takes your arm with it. Oh, and I, that's like a... <laughs> it was crazy. I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Uh, just let's just lift the door up while tightening this. Okay, you're at your maximum as well, right, right up to this. this. Okay, yeah. it's not going to slide off. Okay. So get your hands in here, let's... What are we doing? Roll in this nice and tight. No, no, no. Out here. Okay. Oh my lord, it works. Let's lift it up. Look like at rock climbing. And... And I'm wondering... What's the plan? <laughs> well, once we get it... <clears throat> some tension... Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Then we can pull it down after we tighten up the nuts. Because that assembly is designed. Okay, no more further though. We gotta keep this. That's in, good. Uh... We need room for the handle that goes on the bottom. I like that. Okay, I'm cool with that. Not a bad light to put. Okay. Let go. No way. Are you sure? Dude. Yeah, no. Let's pull this down and see if it works. Here goes everything. Why did that come out? Okay. Strange, but true. So, you seem to be... What the hell is going on with that? What the hell is going on with I that? I think it's a one-shot go. Well, I think what happened, Matt, is it, it unraveled. <sighs> Please, let go. Please, put it down. It unraveled. It's not under enough tension. You know, that actually isn't terrible. I think it's fair to say we're missing something. We're missing something. I don't know what the heck it is, but... It's like, I don't think there's any more science here, Matt. I think it's just... It is what it is. Close the door. Close it up. Push it up. Push it up. Close it up. All right. All right. What we've learned today, Max, is that uh, when you buy the last thing in town, it doesn't have instructions. It might even be missing parts. 
That's no. my best guess. Yeah. And uh, me, I'm going to take this as a win because now at least it's sealed up for the winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's our college try. I have no earthly idea how in the world that is supposed to function. Up. The first turn is good. Yeah. Right? And you then after there? There's a Velcro strap we're missing. Or oh. something. We're definitely missing something. But I ain't going to spend the rest of my day trying to figure it out. Um, I'm going to suggest uh, you build a shed with things that come with instructions and all the parts. This, this figuring things out is for the birds. So, all right, I'm sealed up for the winter. I'm happy. No snow's coming in. That's a win. I think it's time to move on. We're gonna get a, one more good weather day here. We're gonna finish the rest of the siding. Okay, well, there we go, guys. We have a, the basics of a shed. We've got door, we've got windows, we've got light, we've got lots of headroom, lots of strength. We can attach and hang anything we want in here. And maybe we'll have to do that in another video. Um, the outside is going to change just a little bit because we're going to get a brand new door this spring. Other than that, we're going to bring some hydro in here as well. There's no end to the options, right? I'm even looking at this now thinking maybe we should put another door over on this side, make a greenhouse on the other side of this. I don't know. But if you're planning on building a shed and you want something tiny, we've got a video for that. You can check the link in the description for that video. But if you want to build something big, then just remember, go with two by six walls, Go with two by 10 for your roof, we'll cover everything up in plywood, tie it all together like we did in this video, and you can make a shed as big and beautiful and make a workshop for yourself if you like. And if you'd like to see another shed build, we have one on our other channel called Reality Renovision. You can click the link over here. That build was crazy. It has, we chronicled how we built that shed in the midst of all kinds of trouble and turmoil and storms and dog barts and bee stinks. I'm telling you, life is not always easy. Click over here to see how real it can be.